So the thing that I wanted to talk about now is the idea of dx by dy, differentiating x with respect to y and how we can use that. So this is just a really kind of obvious point that you might see here, that dy by dx is equal to 1 over dx by dy. In other words, what this, say, this is saying is that dy by dx is the reciprocal, because we know that reciprocal is 1 divided by, of dx by dy and vice versa. In other words, if you do the reciprocal of dy by dx, you get dx by dy. And if you do the reciprocal of dx by dy, you get dy by dx. And hopefully that just kind of makes sense with the idea of when we're taking a reciprocal of a fraction. It's not a fraction, but it behaves a little bit like a fraction would do. So why might we need to use this? Well, it says sometimes we might have x in terms of y, but we want to find out what dy by dx is. So this particular question that I've got here, it says find dy by dx when x is equal to 2y squared plus y. So it looks different because instead of it being a y equals, we have an x equals. And this is where learning what the notation actually means is so important. Because if I want to differentiate x here, I'm not going to differentiate it with respect to x. I'm going to differentiate this whole thing with respect to y, which means that if you differentiate it with respect to y, you would get dx dy. And now I can differentiate these with respect to y because I'm saying it's in the y variable that I'm talking about. And so 2y squared differentiates to, and y differentiates to, 1. Normally, when you differentiate y with respect to x, you get dy by dx. But when you do it with respect to y, you just get 1. So it's all about what with respect you're doing it to. And then I want to find out what dx, uh, sorry, dy by dx is. So to go from this stage to this stage, I'm just going to take the reciprocal and I get that dy by dx is equal to 1 over 4y plus 1. So it's, you leave it like that. Yeah, you leave it like that. What is strange about this answer compared to previous things where we have dy by dx? It's in terms of y. Normally, when you do dy by dx, you expect to see everything in terms of x. But because of this reciprocal that we've done, because we did everything with respect to y and then just did this sneaky like flip, everything is in terms of y. So you're going to need the y coordinate to be able to find the gradients of these kinds of things that you have here. OK? So I'm going to do just a couple more of these examples. So this time it says find the gradient of x equals 1 plus 2y cubed when y equals 1. So when we're talking about gradient, we are still talking about dy by dx. We're never talking about dx by dy because we know that gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So it's secretly saying find dy by dx when y is equal to 1. So I'll differentiate and find dx by dy. And I've got blah cubed there. So because it's blah cubed, we know that that will go to 3 blah squared multiplied by the derivative of blah, which is 2. So we get 6 1 plus 2y squared. And we've been told that y is equal to 1. And so the gradient is going to be 6 multiplied by 1 plus 2 squared, which is 6 times 9, which is 54. Oh my gosh, I didn't even, I didn't do that at all right. I should have said here, dy by dx is 1 over 6, 1 plus 2y squared. So dy by dx is 1 over 6 times 1 plus 2 squared, which is 1 over 54. Thank you all for stopping me. At least uh, I can guarantee you're all paying attention to me, even if I'm doing something completely wrong. So what you're going to do for homework, I'm going to set you from exercise 9c, question 6 to 10 because it's just doing the same things as before, apart from you've got this extra stage, which I forgot to do, of taking the reciprocal. So it's just useful to know that, because that might be useful later on. Hint, hint, we will be using this in other parts of differentiation. You'll suddenly know you can take the reciprocal of things, OK?